Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If I could have your attention, we'll go ahead and get our meeting call to order. Um, we, this is a special called meeting of the uh, Tifton City Council. We do have uh, agendas on the podium here. If you'd like to grab one, you're certainly invited to do so and follow along with us. Uh, since we're called to order, our first order of business is to approve our agenda that Jessica sent out in a timely manner. So, gentlemen, you have that agenda uh, in your packet that was emailed to you, so I'll take a motion concerning the agenda. Okay, thank you, MJ. Is there a second? Second. Uh, thank you, Josh. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right, uh, the first item on our agenda is the consideration of an ordinance to amend the distance requirements of the city's alcohol beverage ordinance. Uh, Rob and um, our city attorney, Rob Wilmot, and our city manager, Pete Brzezinski, are both um, away and so could not be with us in person, but they are both on the phone and uh, they're calling in. And then we have Emily Beeman, our deputy city manager here at the table, and of course, Jessica White, who is our city clerk. Um, Rob, is there any update, or Pete, is there any update that you need to provide for us concerning the uh, distance requirements? Uh, Mayor, I think that you know, we, we've discussed this uh, previously, and uh, we were looking at what we were, could do related to uh, happy stores in relation to college campuses. And I've come to the conclusion, basically, that state law defines what a college campus is that includes the grounds of the college campus. So I felt like uh, the state law pretty well defines that. But the, uh, but the statute and state law gives the city council, both the counties and municipalities, the authority to uh, lessen the distance requirements between a, uh, a store that sells alcoholic beverages for consumption off the premises from a college campus. And so that is really the issue that's before council. So I've drafted up an ordinance that does, in fact, uh, lessen the distance between a package store and a college campus. And basically what I did, uh, this is code section 6-65A1. And the first subparagraph uh, is subparagraph A. And what I did, I, I took the, uh, the college campus out of subsection A. So then now it reads that any distilled spirits in or within 100 yards of any church building or within 200 yards of any school building, educational building, or school grounds. Then subsection B is what I added, and that says any distilled spirits, malt beverages, and wine for consumption off the premises within 100 yards of a college campus. So everything uh, in our ordinance as far as district requirements remain the same except for the sale of distilled spirits, small beverages, and wine for consumption off the premises, which is now 100 yards. But the 200 yards still applies to any school building, educational building, or school grounds. So what's before council basically is whether or not you want to um, lessen the distance requirements between a store that sells alcoholic beverages and a college campus. I, I put in here 100 yards. I felt like that was pretty much consistent with what wine and, and, uh, and malt beverages are. Uh, so that's where I put the 100 yards in. Now, of course, you know, the distance requirement or what you want to do, there's no minimum that I see in state law, so it's pretty much up to city council as far as what you want to have that distance requirement, but of course it cannot be more restrictive than state law. Okay, all right, thank you for that recap, Rob. Is there, are there any questions or any comments that you'd like to make before I call for a vote? I want to make a comment. Okay, about sure. Lots of discussion. We, we need to, everybody to understand, this was put before the voters. Last November, do you want package liquor stores in Tiffin? Overwhelmingly, it passed. Okay, mm -hmm. we decided let's don't have a package liquor store on every corner. We're going to divide the city into four quadrants and have one in each one. So there will be a package liquor store in within that quadrant. And the state legislature was 
they were clear and they understood there is a difference between a six-year-old or a 10-year-old or a 12-year-old and an 18, 19, and 20-year-old. There is a huge difference there. So that's why the only, you were restricted with schools other than college campuses and churches and treatment facilities. You can't do anything because the, but the legislature said, okay, we understand there's a difference with a college campus. It's, they are in college. That is different. You know, UGA Conference Center, yes, it's across the street. Well, guess what? They serve, they have uh, uh, parties and whatever, and they serve alcohol. It's catered, they serve alcohol. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's don't think that there's not alcohol on the ABAC campus, because guess what? You go to those things, there is there is alcohol. A lot of people, because they use the, the actual property line, not actually buildings for which the students are, you know, education buildings or their residences, which are on the other side of ABAC and well, well aware. I mean, it just, so I mean, I just don't see, I don't see the issue once the voters said, okay, to, to package liquor stores, we try to be responsible about it and, and it, it, we are limited in where they can be placed. So. Well, not only, let me add to that, not only are they limited in where they can be, but they all are also limited in how they must look. Yes. So yes. it was very important, I remember, to this council to make sure that aesthetically they were, um, they were, they were um, something that would be complementary and not um, a negative impact yes. upon an area. And, and they're restricted in what zoning, uh, with zoning. So we, we did try to be as respectful of, uh, before we put it out for the people to vote, as respectful as possible um, on both sides of the coin with regard to whether you wanted it or you didn't want it. If you didn't want it, we respected and understood that, but it was up to the voters, as you said. But if it was approved, these restrictions would be in place. And, and let's not forget, you have to be 21 to buy mm -hmm. beer, wine, which it happens to be sold right close Next door. there, yeah. uh, and distill spirits. And, and so um, the residents rest assured that the chief understands that. We will monitor these locations. We are, we are going to do our best to avoid any underage sales, period. And, and we don't take lightly, as if you've watched these count me, we have suspended beer licenses for underage sales, 60 days, not in morning. So we, we don't take that lightly. You know, you break the law of selling underage, guess what? Your license will be suspended. We will do whatever the, the law, state law allows us to do. So. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions of Rob or Pete? All right, uh, I will call for the vote uh, concerning amending the distance requirements as presented in the um, attached resolution. A motion to approve. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so the motion carries. The next item on our agenda is considering extending the current moratorium on plan development overlays. Uh, Rob, repeat any information on the PDO extension. Uh, yeah, Mary, this is Rob. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we've, uh, we've got a pretty good draft um, that Crystal and Pete and I are looking at. Uh, you know, we all recognize that we've had a lot of issues with PDOs, their enforcement, getting the projects done. Uh, so we've got a, a pretty good working draft that uh, we're going to be working through. I would, what I would like to suggest is perhaps uh, we will be ready to put this on for the August workshop. I think okay. we should have you know, something uh, pretty well uh, finalized at that time, and then we can discuss it at that workshop. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, but again, I think, that I, I think we can get this done sooner than 90 days. I just wanted to make sure that we, you know, we had plenty of time, depending on you know, where discussions go and, and if we need to make certain revisions. Right. Um, September the 30th, 2022 is the date of extension in our, in our packet, so um, that would allow us the time that we need, plus a little buffer if we need to extend further or if there's any uh, circumstances that require additional conversation about that. Um, any other questions of Rob before we call for the vote? Uh, I move to approve. Okay. We have a motion to uh, to approve that extension through September 30th, 2022. Any, is there a second? Second. 
All right, thank you, Lester. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, uh, that concludes the items that are on our agenda. Um, Rob, is there any need to go into executive session? No. Okay, so we will not need to do that. So uh, if there's no further business to come before the council, then we are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.